Hey everyone, Cody from Mac Telecom Networks. In this video, we're going to be taking a look at the TP-Link TLSG3452P. This is a 48 port PoE switch that could be managed in TP-Link Amata or in standalone mode. If you'd like to hire me for network consulting, visit www.mactelecomnetworks.com. You can find us on Instagram at Mac Telecom Networks. And if you'd like to support the channel, we have an Amazon storefront and I'll put a link in the description below. First, I wanna thank TP-Link for sending me the switch to do a review on. They didn't pay me for any of this video and all the thoughts are my own. This switch is $699 MSRP Canadian. First, we're going to take a closer look at this switch, and then we'll take a look when it's in standalone mode, and then we'll adopt it into our Amada controller. Here we have the TP-Link TL-SG3452P switch. On the bottom corner, we have an RJ45 console port, and then we have a USB console. We have some LED indicator lights. One is for our system, one's for speed, fan, and PoE. And then we have our 48 ports that are PoE plus with a PoE budget of 384 watts. On the end, we have our four SFP ports. On the back, we have a Kensington lock, a grounding screw, and then our power input. The switch could be fully integrated with the Amata SDN and it has centralized management. It supports IP Mac, port binding, ACL, port security, denial of service defense, storm control, DHCP snooping, 802.1x, radius authentication, and more. It also provides us optimization for voice and video applications, and we could have this switch in standalone mode. Now that we've seen the switch, let's check out some of the settings when it's in standalone mode. There's quite a bit to this switch and I'll be doing another video of how to do the configuration. For now, we're just going to look at what it offers. Now we're into the switch and it's asking us for a username and password. The default username and password is admin admin. And if you forget this, the only way to recover it is to console into the switch. I've already logged into this switch and created a new password. It asks you once you log in. So I'm going to log in with my credentials. And here is the management interface for the standalone mode. At the top, we could see all of our ports. So we have ports 1 to 52, where 49 to 52 are our SFP ports. Below, it's going to give us a bunch of stats for our system info. So we have our system description, our device name, the device location, the contact information, the hardware version, firmware version, and so on. Below, we could set some configuration up. We want to enable jumble frames, SNTP, IGMP snooping, SNMP, spanning tree protocol, and so on. We would do that here. We could click on jumble frame settings, and this will bring us to the port configuration. So at this point, we could select which ports we want, and then we could change the MTU size. We'd also change the status of the port, so we could enable or disable it. We could change the speed, we could change the duplex and the flow control. Also under the layer two features, we have port isolation, and then we have loopback detection. If we look under layer three features, we're gonna see the IPv4 routing table. We have a static route going from 0.0.0/0 to the next stop, which is our TP-Link router at 192.168.0.1. We have a quality of service tab, and here we could select which ports we want to participate, and then we could set the priority of the 802.1p. And we could also do the trust mode. And the trust modes, we have untrusted, we have trusted at the 802.1p, and then we have trust DSCP. Now let's take a look at the security tab. So we have access control, and by default it's disabled, but we could enable this, and then we have some different control modes. The first control mode is IP-based, and then we have Mac-based or port-based. And in our configuration video, we'll take a closer look at port security. Under maintenance, we have a bunch of other tabs. So we have system monitor, CPU monitor, memory monitor, traffic monitor, mirroring, DLDP, SNMP, we have our logs, device diagnostics, and network diagnostics. Under system and then device description, right now it's saying the device is located in Hong Kong, which it isn't, I'm gonna to put Toronto. And then system contact, you could put that to whatever you like and I'll press apply. We change the system time, the daylight setting time, and LED, we could turn those on or off. Under user and management, we could create a new user, which you probably should do and not leave it on admin by default. And then we have a bunch of different system tools. So we have boot config, restore config, backup config, 
firmware upgrade, and so on. Under PoE, we could do different PoE configs. So we could set the PoE priority, the PoE limit, the time range that the PoE is on, and we could choose a PoE profile if we've created one. Back under our layer two features, this is where we're gonna do our VLAN. So we could do our 802.1Q VLANs, we could do Mac VLAN, protocol VLAN, VLAN VPN, and we could do GVRP. We also have multicast spanning tree LLDP and L2PT as well as PPPoE. So as you can see, the standalone mode has a lot of features to it and that's gonna have to be covered in another long video. Now I'm gonna go ahead, we're gonna adopt this into our Armada controller and take a look at it. Now we're over at our Armada controller and we can see that the 48 port switch is pending adoption. I'm gonna click on the switch and then we're gonna press adopt. Now the switch is adopted, we could see it's given it a device name of its MAC address. We could switch that something easier to identify. It shows us our IP address of 192.168.0.177. The status is connected and it's showing us our model number and the version that we're running on. It also shows the uptime and then we have this locate button. If we were to press the locate, it would flash the LED on and off and we could also reboot the switch. If we click on the switch, this is gonna show us all of our ports and we could scroll to the side to see all the way down to port 52. We could see that I'm using port two as my uplink to my TP-Link router, and then we could see port 10 is giving out power. This is my OC200 controller. On port 11, that's what this PC is currently sitting on. It shows us all of our status light indicators and what they mean. And then it shows us an overview. This will just be our normal stuff like our serial number, our model, and our IP address, as well as firmware versions. If we click on our uplink, it's gonna show us what we're uplinking to, which is port two. And then our uplink device is our router. That's what I have it named as. Now, if we look under ports, this is where we could edit each port. And then we could look at the lag groups. Right now, I don't have any lag groups created, but I'll show you how to do that. If we wanted to add a VLAN to a port, all we would do is select the port. So we'll use port three and then press edit. On the port, we could change the name and then the profile that is our VLAN. So I'll hit the drop down menu. And then we have a couple different VLANs selected. I have an HD test, which was for an HD access point by TP-Link. And then we press apply and it will go on to that network. To create a lag, all we have to do is press the edit pencil again. And then we want to select profile overrides under profile overrides in the operation. We have switching, mirroring and aggregating. So we want to select the aggregating and we're on port three. And then we want to choose whichever port we want to participate. So we could go four and five, and then we could select the lag ID. So I'm going to select lag one, and then we could either have static lag or LACP. I'm gonna choose LACP and then press apply. Now, if we look under lag, we're gonna see the lag ID is one, the name is lag one. The status is disconnected right now because I have nothing plugged in. And then we could see the ports that are participating. So we have port three, port four and port five. If we look under clients, this is gonna show us our clients currently connected. And I have my desktop and the OC200 controller connected. Under config, this is where we could give it a name. I'll call this switch. And then we could either use the site settings for the LED, we could have them on or we could have them off. Under services, we could specify what management VLAN we wanna use. We could have loopback detection enabled. By default, spanning tree is off, but we could have spanning tree or rapid spanning tree. We could also set SNMP. Under IP settings, we could tell this to either take a DHCP address or we could statically assign it. And then we could manage the devices. Here we could do a custom upgrade, force provision, or forget the device from the controller. And then under statistics, this is gonna show us our CPU and memory utilization. So that was an overview of the TP-Link TL-SG3452P48 port PoE switch. Let me know what you wanna see in the next config video and I'll see if I could add that in. If you have any questions about the switch, please leave it in the comments below. If you like this video, please hit the thumbs up button. If you're new here, please subscribe and hit the bell icon. All right, thanks.